Hey, everybody. Welcome to the show. I am your host, your ex life strategist, Karina Calhoun. I'm super excited to have a very special guest on the show today. But today, before we get started, I do want to just send out a, a happy birthday to my dad. He's not here on earth anymore. So, you know, I know that um, while he was here, we absolutely loved him. So I just want to say happy birthday to my dad, who's still in my heart. But nonetheless, today we've got a very special guest, and this is going to be a conversation that, listen, I want you all to grab your journal, grab your notepad, get your beverage of choice, and I want you to take lots of notes, because I know this is going to be a conversation that we really absolutely need to have. And there's going to be some gems and jewels that need to come out that you're going to need to get and take note of. So I want to welcome to the show, Ms. Brenda Hooper. Brenda, how are you doing today? I'm great, Karina. Thanks for having me. You are very welcome. Brenda, where in the world are you? I'm in Vancouver, British Columbia, Canada. You know, I, I keep talking to Canadian folks recently. I believe this is a sign that I need to go to Canada. I have always wanted to go to Canada. I you think I need to go. I need, You'll I have need to, to come. To yeah. Trip. Yeah, I'm on the West Coast, so the far West Coast of Canada. So gotcha, gotcha. Yeah. yeah. So what would be a place that you would say for someone first visiting? Where's a place that you think I should go? Oh gosh. Well, I think the first thing that comes to my mind is people love going to Victoria, which is our okay. capital. And that's on Vancouver Island, which is about a two hour ferry ride from the Vancouver Ooh. area. And it is absolutely gorgeous there, like beautiful old growth uh, forest trees wow. and ravens and bears and I mean, just wildlife and it's absolutely gorgeous there. So I certainly recommend that to anybody. So you mentioned two things that caught my attention. You said it's a two hour ferry, which means there's water, which means there's got to be seafood, lots of seafood. <laughs> you and betcha. if you mentioned seafood... <laughs> hands down I'm there we have the wild pacific salmon we have cod we have shellfish crab uh it, yeah it's just a feast out there a girl the... after my own heart I love it <laughs> so Brenda let's jump right in let's jump right in how are you loving on the world around you these days well I am all about relationships so about you know, restoring relationships and enriching relationships and empowering relationships. That's my purpose. That is where I've, um, I've come from. Uh, and what I just know that that's my passion is to just bring people together, especially when things are trying and a little challenging. It's uh, helping them get through those, those difficult discussions and moving forward in relationships. Wow, I love that. I absolutely love that, especially with there's this culture recently that's come through in the last few years where people have been adamant of cutting people off. And I get it. You know, we've got to make sure we protect our peace and we set boundaries and things like that. But sometimes I think we may jump the gun and do it a little prematurely. But that's my own personal opinion. You know, but I do believe in conflict resolution. I believe in that wholeheartedly. I am a person that when an issue comes up, I want to get it resolved immediately so we can go back to loving each other. That's just, that's just not sure where it came from. Not sure well, why. We're on the same page. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So it's actually me. a difference. There's a difference between conflict resolution and conflict management. And I do mm. both. So conflict resolution is resolving an existing conflict and conflict management is managing yourself and others in a way to help to not let conflict escalate. Wow. Yeah. So it's, it's learning to, to manage both. Yeah. So see, I'm telling you all, grab your notebook, grab your journal, take lots of notes because that is something in my 50 plus years, I have never known. And I have been in high level management, high level leadership, and I have never had to, you know, really listen to that being segmented out like that. So let's talk about 
this difference in management and resolution? Let's talk about that. Well, conflicts happen. Uh, we're just, we're humans. So we're going to have differences and differences are okay. It's how we manage ourselves and these differences is going to play out in what our words and our behaviors and how we impact others. And so the first thing is to, is to look at uh, this management piece. What are you, what's your self-talk? What are you, what are you saying to yourself when you're starting to realize, hey, there's some tension going on here. And what do I want to do about this? And do you automatically get defensive or your back up against the wall? You know, are you feeling like that? Or do you shut down? And a lot of people have those extreme reactions, right? And mm -hmm. so it's first of all, learning to manage yourself. So it's becoming more aware of what's going on for you physiologically you know, emotionally, what's happening to you. So you manage yourself first. You cannot, and I cannot determine how somebody else is going to respond. Mm -hmm. What we can do though, is when they respond for us to be able to manage how we then respond. So it's just playing that. So conflict resolution is the process of resolving an existing conflict. So I do that, for instance, in facilitated discussions, or I'm, I'm a professional mediator. So I will uh, go in, I get called into, I do internal workplace disputes. Okay. So I will get called in where it's escalated to a piece part where they need to bring in a third party, you know, outside neutral to come in and just help, you know, these parties come together and resolve what these issues are. So mm. It's they got an issue they need to resolve. They need some help in that. Somebody neutral to walk them through that process. Or we, as our own person, manage how we respond to others and manage how we manage ourselves. <laughs> gotcha. So would you say the conflict management is more centered around the emotional intelligence piece than anything else? Emotional intelligence. Uh, there's another part of intelligence called conversational intelligence mm, mm -hmm. and conversational intelligence is an actual study it was created and i'm a coach for conversational intelligence created by a social anthropologist and a neuroscience couple uh, and what we learn to do there is to help people understand what's actually going on in our body when mm. we are experiencing this disconnect and the, the potential for conflict, what's happening to us physiologically? And then how do we control that? How do we control our body? How do we control our brain to be able to access the thinking part of our brain and calm us down? So techniques and words and behaviors that are going to improve the relationship and improve what, uh, you know, the dynamics going on between the relationships. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know, and the thing about it is I, I really believe in self-awareness, um, really gauging what you're thinking. Now, you know, everybody has different levels of it, and I'm very well aware of that. Um, but what I also want to bring to the conversational table with you is something that I find absolutely intriguing. Uh, I, you know, I read through your profile sub uh, submission and you talked about having the conversation that people necessarily don't wanna have. And that is kind of coupled in with the conflict resolution, conflict management piece. And so, you know, I, I really, this is a, an amazing conversation that I really feel like more people um, really need to have this because I, I I sit back and I think about the things that happened when I was in corporate America, you know, um, the, the disagreements, the, the conflicts, just the craziness that went on, but then also how this can also spill over into your home life, your personal life, not just with your spouse or your mate, but also with your children, with your parents, with mm -hmm. your siblings. I mean, I just, when I sat and I looked, I'm just thinking all of the things, all of the people that are affected, how do you 
bring this to the table so that people understand this is not just a one and done. This is not just, hey, let's just just do this at work, but this can actually help you in every aspect of your life. Well, Karina, as you being a life coach, uh, you know, we know that we can't really separate our business and our life. Like they talk about work-life balance, but it's really just life balance. Exactly. And so one of the things is exactly as you say, like what, what's going on for you at work impacts your family life and what goes on in family impacts your work life. So when there's stress, when there's conflict, when there's anxiety and all these things going on for us, either at either place, it's going to impact us. So you want to be able to manage um, to the best of your ability and having these types of skills, it's communication skills, it's active listening skills, it's uh, leadership skills, all these things come together and that's our life, right? Mm-hmm. So wherever we are. Yeah, absolutely. Now, Brenda, tell us, you know, just at this point, just kind of being nosy, to be honest, how did you get started in this? What, what catapulted you into this? Well, I kind of have two stories. So one's okay. personal, and then the other one is more in the business side of things. So the personal side is this personal story is I grew up with two perfect role models of what not to do in conflict. Mm. <laughs> my mm. parents. So I call my parents, not behind their backs, I jokingly call them this, and they're both here, you know, on this earth and love them to bits, but they are since divorced because they did not know how to communicate yeah. effectively with one another. So my dad, I called him, um, call him old yeller. <laughs> So when he would get upset and angry, he would stomp and he'd be very intimidating and quite scary, you know, especially as children. My mother is a silence. I call her the silencer. And she knew how to give the silent treatment for, she had it down to an art form of giving it for, (laughs) for, you know, weeks, it seemed like to a child Mm -hmm. (laughs) with time, it would just go on and on. Well, we're products of our upbringing. Yeah. So I would use those techniques of either yelling to try and get my way or get my voice heard and, or get angry and shut down and give the silent treatment. So what happened there was I, uh, I became a stepmom at the age of 25 to, so I became an instant stepmom to my son who is nine years old at the time. We were an instant family. I didn't have the skills to be able to try and figure out that stressful situation. Mm -hmm. And uh, I just saw that my husband was starting to shut down and my stepson was starting to shut down. And I thought, oh my gosh, I have to do something here. Also, in that period of time, I think because of this life balance or imbalance, I was reacting and I ended up going through, not proud of this, ended up going through uh, three jobs in a year and a half. Mm -hmm. I quit three jobs Mm -hmm. because of anger, because of resentment, things that were going on at work that I didn't know how to express myself properly and effectively. So looking at those two, you know, personal and work situations, I thought I have to do better. I have to try and figure this out because what I'm doing isn't working and it's suffering, you know, with my relationships and for myself as well. So then I went to what uh, the Justice Institute of British Columbia and got my certification in conflict resolution. So that was the start of my journey when I learned there is another way Mm -hmm. and there's a better way and let's just keep working on these skills. So that started my journey. And then from there, I started mediating. I'm a professional, it's called a chartered mediator from the ADR Institute of Canada. And what I found though, is that mediation is a reactive process. Mm, mm -hmm. People will call me when it's like steps to court, (laughs) you know, Mm -hmm. like Mm -hmm. just before that lawsuit or just, you know, or whatever. So they'll call in the mediator and they want me to fix it for them. Mm -hmm. I didn't get into mediation to fix. I got into mediation because I thought that that was the avenue to, help restore relationships. So I was actually doing seven years of family mediation before I went into corporate mediation. Mm. 
And so I was doing a lot of separation and divorce. And it really saddened me to see, you know, they would just get to mediation because they, they didn't want to deal with a lawyer and they wanted something that they felt was going to be cheaper. That was it. That was their drive and motivation. It had nothing to do with actually trying to have an amicable enough a relationship. So to the best interest of their children. <laughs> mm-hmm. So uh, I thought about that and I ended up doing a lot of coaching. And so then from there, I thought, okay, I need to build my skills in coaching. So I went to Royal Roads University and got my graduate certificate in executive coaching. And I really find the coaching and then training. I've been teaching for many, many years. Uh, just those that skill set really just, um, I, I don't know, it just opens my heart. I mean, mm-hmm. and people are able to you know, spend the time and develop their skills. And that's so that's where I really feel like I flourish is in yeah. that area of coaching and training. And then I bring in facilitation skills mm-hmm. because, hey, I work with teams and with teams they're like a family and they can have their disputes. So yeah, yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Well. Absolutely. Yeah. I love, you know, just, I wanted to be able to bring the starting point uh, of why you began doing this, because I think it's important for people that are listening to really understand that it's not a one and done it's not a one specific place. It's, as you said, there is no, you know, this whole idea of work-life balance. To me, I've just always thought, throw it out the window and just balance life, period, you know? And so I want people to really understand where you're coming from, why we're having this conversation, because it's, it's so multifaceted that the conflict management and the conflict resolution, the hard conversations, those conversations that people just don't want to have. I am one of those people, I'm not proud to say this, but I am one of those people, I run head first into a difficult conversation because I just want to get to the end of it. I just want to get to the end of it. I want to get it resolved so that everyone, because I want everyone to, you know, be who and what they're supposed to be at the end of it. And I'm so curious, I understand. Rena, you said that you're not proud of that. What what are you not proud because of? Because sometimes people don't want to do that. And uh-huh. so it can be, it can be perceived as being aggressive. It can be perceived as being pushy and things like that. So that's, that's what I mean when I say that. Uh-huh. And so, you know, and I've had that said to me. So it's not that I'm, you know, goody two shoes, but it's just that I just want, I know that we can get back to being on one accord, whatever that arena is. And so I'm just one to listen, let's go forward. And so I know just, you know, having dealt with people in so many different areas of life, lots of times people don't really want to do that. And it's, as you said, they get to this point only because it's seemingly the last resort. And so I really want to have this conversation so people understand, listen, let's start off with this. Yeah. You know, there's so much heartache. There's, um, you know, talking about, you know, you going head on, there's conflict styles and Mm -hmm. everyone, we all have a conflict style. And so Yours might be more of a direct, let's just Mm -hmm. get it done, Mm -hmm. where others are the type where they need to back off a little bit because Mm -hmm. they need to process. Mm -hmm. They need to process what's going on. They need to process their answer. So they might appear as an avoider Mm -hmm. to conflict, where in fact, if they recognize that in themselves, all they need to do is say, is to say to the person, look at you know, I'm, I'm hearing what you have to say, but I just really need a little bit of time for myself. And how about we get back together and talk about this in an hour or the next day, yeah, or wherever yeah. it is, right? Just giving that space that they need. Absolutely. And then the person who wants to get it resolved, it's great that they do. Mm-hmm. And just, but just being respectful of, okay, get it. And yes. yeah, let's make sure that we just get back and be, we can talk about this you know, even level heads prevail type of thing. So 
uh, you know, just a, a technique that I often coach my clients with is just seeing what type of person this other person mm -hmm. might be rather than making assumptions about why they might not be dealing with you. Exactly. Moment, like, yeah. Yeah. So, and I think that's, I think that's really the key to it because once you can get that idea, okay, they're not running from it because I mean, I'm sure you've encountered folks that are like, yeah, I want to get it on the table. I want to talk about it. Let's do this. Let's get it resolved. And then you've got the folks that, yeah, let me just process it and then we can come back to it. And then you've got some folks that are like, mm -mm, don't want to talk about it at all. You know, so having encountered so many different people, I want people to really hear what we're saying that you have options, you know, because the silent treatment that you spoke about that your mom, you know, initiated, it's unfortunate because, and I guess I'm just really touchy feely about that because people leave here every day and we don't know when they're going to leave. Right. So to me, it's wasted time because I've experienced all of that as well in various relationships. And yeah. so I'm just really headstrong when it comes to that, <laughs> because I'm thinking people are leaving here every day. Why, why would you waste time and not speak to the one that you love? Or if it's in the workplace, the person that you're working with, or the flip side, because it kind of sounds like your your parents were a lot like mine. <laughs> just being, I think a lot like a lot of ours, yeah. <laughs> yeah, just being honest, you know, the dad stomping, you know. So um, it's a hard conversation. And, and in, in a way, if I found it easier to deal with old Yeller, my dad, yeah. because I knew what he was angry about. Exactly. Right. Exactly. And I could, and I, I would be left, you know, like, what did I do wrong? You know, like, yeah. okay, what did I do wrong this time? <laughs> you know, yeah. and, and until my mother was able to, and she's a lot better. I mean, she's yeah. a lot better than yeah. she, than she was, but until she was able, like she was the avoider and that's mm -hmm. why she was a silencer and shut and shut herself down. Mm -hmm. There's also the type that you might, I'm sure have encountered where they're the people who appease yeah right and so they'll just go along with everybody mm -hmm. and then start feeling resented or mm -hmm. resentful when resentful, yes they don't have a voice that has been yeah. heard because they've just pleased everybody else right and you can't do that either <laughs> so you have to you know it, that's where you have to really take a look at yourself and say like how do i when when the going gets rough and tough and hard in this conversation where what's my tendency where do I seem to go and yeah. then how are the other people reacting and responding and then how can I improve that what can I say or do that's going to help make this conversation easier for us I mean it's all yeah. about us talking together yeah. it's not about all about me or all about this other person yeah. it's about us and I and I feel like you know I'm a little um I don't know, this is really tugging at my heart right now. And I guess because I see so many, have seen so many relationships dissolved over the years because of these different things. And so I'm literally, as you're talking about this, processing even relationships that I may not have had anything to do with, but was a witness to the dissolving of it, the dissolution of it, but it's, I'm just processing all of this and just thinking how, wow, relationships ended, workplace, family, whatever have ended because we didn't have Brenda. <laughs> well, thank you. <laughs> uh, yeah. I mean, it's, you know, it's having, it's just having going, reaching out for that help when you, when you mm -hmm. need it. Mm -hmm. um, I often get called a counselor and I say, I am not a counselor. Mm -hmm. I am a conflict management dispute resolution professional. Mm -hmm. And, but really I say that I'm a leadership communication conflict management yeah. professional uh, because it's all about the engagement and, and communication, but it's just being able to go out. And if you don't have a Brenda, yeah. <laughs> you know, or don't have a Karina, then it's, who can you talk to? Yeah. Not to get 
them on your side. It's not about that. Exactly. How can you, you know, get that neutral um, person to support you? And how can you perhaps do things differently mm -hmm, mm -hmm, and coach mm -hmm. you through it? So somebody who you trust and you know, that's going to be neutral and not take sides, but just be able to coach you through and mentor you through, um, you know, having a typical type of conversation. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I just really feel like 2023 in regards to the Go, Go Be Great podcast has really become, it's quickly becoming the heart centered place where, you know, because the folks that have been on so far are amazing in just articulating things that we need to work on inwardly so that we can cohesively live in this world together. Because I believe that's so necessary. It, it even more so. I mean, I think it's even more so now. I mean, we've, we're just seeing the world become so separated mm -hmm. that uh, as individuals, we need to figure out ourselves and help ourselves first and then help the world. You know, absolutely. One person, one conversation at a time. Absolutely. Yeah. And there's nothing selfish about, like you said, figuring you out. You've got to figure you out first. You know, I can't go to you and say, Brenda, you know, I need you to do this, this and this, but I'm not really sure why I need you to do it. I'm not really sure what it's got, what effect it's going to have on me, if any, you know, I'm not actually counting up the cost of, okay, what type of relationship is that going to be for me and for you? I mean, there's just so many different things. So there's, many different things. All these layers. I mean, yes. as you and I just said, it's not just about work relationships or home relationships. It's community relationships. Yes. It's, it's uh, how do we, how do we be better? How do I be better? And Hey, I mean, I've been doing this for 20 years and I still ask myself that every yeah. day, you know, like, what can I do? And I'm not perfect. Right. Uh, right. I mean, I still have my moments. We have our triggers, you mm -hmm. know, it's, but it's learning about what are these triggers and how do I manage it better the next time? If I really mm -hmm. blew it this time mm -hmm. you know? and actually having that conversation with that other person. Yeah. You know, I yeah. think of uh, when my son was two years old, <laughs> two or three years old, he was just really little. And you know, he's at the kind of at that no stage, but he was talking and uh, he got, he got angry with me. I think I did give him a toy or I don't know what it was. Mm -hmm. And he looked at me and he says, mommy, I'm really angry at you. <laughs> I thought this is wonderful. <laughs> I try not to smile and laugh that he was listening. He was, you know, like we're the role models. So when you can hear that you can express an emotion and it'd be safe to express an emotion, then it's wonderful, mm -hmm. you know, but then he got angry with me because I laughed at him. <laughs> it was so darn cute. Anyway, so we talked it out, but you know, he's a, he's a 26 year old, you know, person who has an open heart and open mind and has great conversations with people. So, yeah. you know, that's, that's all that we strive to do, right. For our children and, you know, our neighbors and friends and whomever's in our life. Yeah, absolutely. And that reminds me that, you know, I have a daughter, she's, she's 25 now. And as a result of a lot of the different experiences that I had as a child and then a young woman, um, I did the same exact thing with her in that I explained to her, you can be mad, but you need to verbalize what's on your mind in a respectful way. We can talk about it. I don't mind you being upset that's perfectly okay. You know, and so now at 25, my husband tells me he's never seen this type of relationship between somebody that young and their parent, nice. because she's always all her life been, you know, very open and honest with me, very transparent, even with things that I'm like, yeah, I don't really want to know. But, you know, that's just because I wanted her to have that availability. Listen, well, be, be angry, but be, but articulate it. Yeah. So it's, it's looking at that, you know, emotional will, 
and expanding mm-hmm. your emotional vocabulary also to be able to, you know, maybe anger is hurt, mm-hmm. you know? And so I'm feeling really hurt instead of really angry, but like being able to expand on your vocabulary okay. emotions to be able to pinpoint them more accurately, you know, something to that people can practice. Um, but it, what I heard with you describing you and your daughter is that you have a relationship of trust. Mm-hmm. She trusts that she can come to you and express whatever it is that she's expressing. And it's not going to, you're, you're not going to judge. Mm-hmm. You're not going to criticize. Mm-hmm. You're not going to, you're Absolutely. not going to do something that is going to help her feel vulnerable right, or unsafe. And that is the foundation of building relationships and it's trust. And I think honestly, Brenda, that's, I am like in love with you right now because this is just a conversation that I feel is so very needed. I don't know how many times I can say that. We do need it. Yeah. Yeah. But how can folks get in touch with you? My company is called Discussions by Design. So my website is www.discussionsbydesign. And I'm on LinkedIn under Brenda Hooper and I'm on Instagram discussions dot by dot design. <laughs> I'm out there mainly on LinkedIn um, is, is a lot, but uh, I'm actually just right now in the midst of changing up my website. So uh, it will be, you know, like give me a couple more weeks and it'll be all looking all together different, but uh, yeah, just different options and things out there for people to access me. I'm giving some, uh, some free training on my website and uh, little, you know, on high performance teams, like work, like work, work related, but relationship related as well. So yeah. Can you there. Yeah, absolutely. So I just want to encourage the folks that are listening, you know, even if you're in some type of leadership role in corporate, I know there's this big push out here in corporate to begin to see employees differently and provide those safe spaces and the opportunities to grow. And this is actually one of those opportunities that you can provide to your teams so that it's not just the workplace. I cannot emphasize that enough. When you have whole and unfragmented folks, or at least folks that are moving towards being whole and unfragmented, you've got better workers. Well, since the pandemic, there's a new leadership trend, which is compassionate leadership. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And that is, that's where we develop our empathy, you know, to have that empathy and to be able to show that and, you know, lead with your heart. Yeah. When we lead with our heart, the rest of the stuff starts to fall into place Mm -hmm. when you've got engaged employees because they feel like it's a safe place to work and Mm -hmm. they can express themselves. So it's just uh, for growth, personal growth, as well as business growth. It's, it's, it's being able to have these types of conversations and really get onto the same page with everybody else and have that vision, that leadership vision of what is it, the culture, what culture do you want? Mm -hmm. And I, I teach about conflict resiliency. You want to, mm. you, you want a culture that a workplace culture where it's not, it's not to eliminate conflict because there's good conflict. Yeah, you can right, have right, really right. great conversations. You need to build a, a culture that has the conflict resiliency. How do you support people having different ideas and being able to express them in a way that's productive? Mm -hmm. So for instance, I encourage organizations to actually have debating groups. Wow. Right. And when they have debating groups, then they can start to feel, what does it feel like when somebody has an opposite opinion of mine and how do I talk through that? And it actually builds that skill, Mm -hmm. right. Of this conflict resiliency that we all need. Mm, I love that. I love Mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. I love that. Yeah. So it's, that's just another tip for any of your business people out there with employees is to, yeah. is to build that competency with your employees. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, I could talk to you about this for hours, just so that, you know, I'm not going <laughs> to torture you with that though. 
<laughs> this hasn't been torture at all. I mean, you're talking about the things I love to talk about, but it's been such a pleasure, Karina, to talk to you today. Absolutely. So do you have, um, just one more time, give us uh, your website address and then any last words of wisdom that you want to leave with everyone? Okay. Yeah. So it's uh, discussions by design and you can email me at brenda at discussionsbydesign.com and words of wisdom. I think just uh, build that, the trust in your relationships, you know, and uh, trust is actually an acronym. So trust is uh, T, T is for transparency. R is for relationship. U is for understanding. S is for shared success and T is for truth telling and testing reality. Wow. I love it. So folks, we've had on the show today, Brenda Hooper, and this has been an absolute, I mean, this is probably the longest episode thus far for the year (laughs) Um, because I, I just absolutely love this particular topic and I believe in it wholeheartedly. So I wanted to give it the space that it deserves because I want you to be able to get what you need as you're going through this thing called life. And so please reach out to Brenda because at this point we are cutting all excuses to continue to live how we've been living, doing things how we've been doing things. So um, this has been another great episode of Go Be Great and I'm your host. I will see you all on the flip side. Bye everybody.